Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. As believers, we believe that once we have gone into the graves, once we have stepped into that realm that's between this world and between the hereafter, Allah will then resurrect us to a place that's known as Al Ard al Mahshar, the, the gathering, the place of assembly. And it's a place that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said is flat and there's no sin on the ground, there's nothing on the ground or, or on the face of the earth except for the creation of Allah. And God would cause all of the creation to come to this one place where every creation would stand in His place. He would only be able to occupy the place that He is standing in and He would be completely stripped of all titles, completely stripped of even all clothes. Now, I know that may sound a little strange. How would it be that a person would be stripped of their clothes? And Aisha, the wife of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, she asked him, she said, Oh, Messenger of God, you know, if that's the case, wouldn't the men and the women be looking at each other? And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, responded, Al-Amru Ashaddu Min Dalik, that the situation is more severe than that. People are so focused on what's going on at the matter at hand that they're not even paying attention to that. And so from that, we believe that the belief that everyone would be made, made to stand as equal in the sight of God. And then Allah would call each and every single individual up to meet him. And as the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, there would be no translator. There would be, there would be no interpreter. It would just be you, your creator, and your deeds. Now, this, this concept always comes up. You know, why is it that, in, how is it in Islam that we believe that we can qualify for the mercy of Allah without having believed that, for example, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for our sins, or without having believed that someone else had to sacrifice on our behalf? And the, the, the answer is quite simple, because we believe God is merciful enough that God does not need to sacrifice any human being or sacrifice any animal so that God can forgive us and show mercy upon us. But at the same time, God expects a little bit of an effort. So on the day of judgment, as Muslims, we believe you either meet the mercy of God or you meet the justice of God. <clears throat> he will not be unjust to anyone. So the first rule of the day of judgment is la dhulm al in, in, in the Arabic language, which means there is no transgression today, no injustice today. Even the disbeliever would not have injustice committed towards them. If a person, for example, was not exposed to any form of religion whatsoever, was not exposed to Islam, was not exposed to God, had no means of accessing the truth, then that person would be forgiven on the day of judgment. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that that person would stand in front of God and complain that the message never reached me or I died as a child, or I was senile, or I wasn't, you know, I wasn't mentally capable of accepting this message. And so God would test that individual alone. So as Muslims, we believe, you know what, leave every individual to themselves. Every person will be questioned alone on the day of judgment. And every person would stand before Allah alone. So everyone needs to worry about themselves. And when I meet God, again, I either meet his justice or I meet his mercy. What does that mean? You know, God tells us to prepare all of these good deeds, but at the same time, is it possible that a person could, could give to God what he gave to them? Absolutely not. If God was to weigh your deeds against his blessings upon you, there is absolutely no way that any human being, even a worshiper that worshipped for thousands and thousands of years, would not be able to repay God for the blessings of God upon them. So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said once to his wife, he said that whoever meets the, whoever meets the questioning of God will be destroyed. Whoever actually has to be questioned will be destroyed. So Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, she said, but God says in the Quran that the believers would have hisab and yasira. They, they would have an easy form of accountability. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in essence, what he said, he said, ذلك العرض. He said, that is the presentation of deeds. He said, but if God actually starts calling you out on your deeds, then there's a problem. But in essence, for the believers, what God, what God does is He recognizes effort. You put forth your deeds. We know it's not enough, but God from His infinite mercy would embrace you in that mercy and would put the bad deeds aside and He would hand, and, and we believe that the believer will receive his book in his right hand and take it to the scale and be weighed with his deeds and at the same, and then enter into paradise. And the one who disobeyed God would have his fair chance, would have his fair trial, but at the same time he would meet the justice of God and God would not transgress him in any way. And then comes paradise and hellfire which we'll talk about in a future episode. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.